Hello and welcome to the April edition of Hoikai News with me, Daniel Franklin. And me, Hannah Thompson. Coming up. Hoikai School has launched a brand new app that can be used by pupils, parents and staff. We take a look at this exciting new app. Two S3 girls visit Birmingham as part of a lottery funded Gallipoli project. Ross Wildian speaks to Lee Bell and Jennifer Savald about their trip. Mr Simpson is our next teacher we speak to in our series of interviews with staff here at Toik High. We have some exclusive breaking technology news, stay tuned to find out more. And Jack Chelly's interview with former Hoik High School student Fraser Rennick about his rugby career. Hello, we are delighted to announce that Hoik High School now has its very own app. It has been designed to keep pupils updated on important events going on around the school and will be very accessible as it is available for free on all iOS and Android devices. The app allows pupils to view the whole school calendar, push notifications can be made visible on the user's lock screen and also the latest school news will be constantly updated on the app. Each individual user will have the ability to adjust the settings and personalise the app to make the information shown more relevant to them. Every user can make their own decisions as how they want to use the app. However, it is recommended that pupils turn on push notifications as it will allow the school to send important updates straight to the person's device. The app is available now and can be downloaded from the iOS and Android app stores. Any feedback which you may have is greatly appreciated. Now for some news in brief. On Tuesday 29th of March, pupils participated in the annual mu Music Spring Concert. There was a great deal of talent on display from the variety of different groups and school bands. Here are some photos from the evening. The Camera Club runs every last Wednesday of every month. If you're interested in joining, please see Miss Alderson in the Art Department. Miss McKenzie is urging pupils enrolled in the Duke of Edinburgh Award to log in and update their account. Support is available on T5 during Wednesday and Thursday lunch times. Today, as you may have noticed, is a non-school uniform day. So far, we have raised £530 for this year's charities. The Lavender Trust and Click Sergeant and more money is still coming in. And just a reminder that you can get the daily bulletin update on our website at hoikhighschool.co.uk forward slash bulletin. S3 pupils Lee Bell and Jennifer Sibold recently visited Birmingham with the Borders Textile Townhouse to attend the Gallipoli Centenary Education Schools Conference. The girls spoke at the conference about the involvement Hoik High School has with the Tower House and the project that they did in S3 history about the impact of the Gallipoli campaign on Hoik. Here is Ross Lothian who has been speaking to the two girls. Recently Hoik Tower House has been receiving funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund and the Gallipoli Sanitary Project to create a memorable textile project with Hoik High School. On the 13th of March the Gallipoli trip started off with a long travel to Birmingham. The journey started off at 10am when the third year's pupils were picked up from Hoyk High School and taken to Edinburgh Airport. They soon departed the airport and headed to Birmingham. After they arrived at Birmingham, they were taken to the IBS Styles Hotel on Lyon Street. At the hotel, they met other girls of their age and practiced their presentations. The next day, they were free and able to check out the IBS Hotel. A few minutes later, they arrived at the conference venue. There, they set up. At 10 a.m., they had the Gallipoli Sanitary Education Project Skills Conference when they showed off their presentations. I talked to the girls about their experience of the trip. 
trip sounds like great fun. What were the educational benefits of the trip? Well, um, the conference was all about people's view on Gallipoli and how it affected them. So it was called, What Does Gallipoli Mean to Me? So it was all um, about how their small part, where they were from, how it affected them during World War One. So, um, and it also, we got a lot of speaking skills from it, speaking in front of quite a few people. What was the best bit of the trip? Well, I think the best bit was learning about how people from different countries, what they thought of, of Gallipoli and how it affected them as well as it affected us because there's people from like Turkey, Australia, Ireland, Scotland, England, or is it from all over so it's good to see different aspects of, it, of Gallipoli. Would you like to attend similar conferences in the future? Um, yeah, I think it would be good because well, we were asked if we'd go to the Turkish Embassy in Edinburgh later on in the year and that's like a national conference so the people from like all over the world going to it and um, yeah, I think it would be good. The trip was a success and will probably be held next year or in the near future. This has been Russ Lothian reporting for Hoyt Kai News. Mobile technology is increasingly vital in all of our lives and is now indispensable in almost every profession. For instance, much of this news programme is filmed and edited using mobile devices. Recognising how impact technology is for modern education, Hoyt High School is on track to be the first school in the Scottish borders to have what is known as a one-to-one -one iPad programme. This is when all pupils have personal use of an iPad to use both in lessons and at home. Teachers have been practising using iPads for over a year now and Hoi Kai News has can exclusively reveal that after the summer holidays, two-year groups will be, be starting this trial. The two-year groups will be issued with iPads are the current S1 and S2. That will mean that in August, every pupil in years S2 and S3 will be invited with their parents to attend a launch event at which they receive their devices. Mr Hawkshaw, who chairs the Switched on Learning group, said that this is the biggest change in education since the invention of the blackboard. It is very exciting but we need to get it right. That is why we are inviting all of the parents in to find out what is happening. It is time for our regular interview segment he and here is Ross speaking to Mr Simpson. When did you start working here at Hoyt Kai School? I started in August 1980. Now when, when I started teaching here Lenin was still alive. Now that's John Lenin rather than Lenin, the revolutionary leader in Russia. What has changed over your time here at the school? Well, the staff have just about all changed. I would say most of them have changed because I'm, I think I'll be the longest serving member of staff now with 36 years service. The pupils haven't really changed. You know, teenagers are still teenagers. Technology, uh, you know, has, has come on, which is not one of my strong points, obviously, but technology is, is um, within teaching, has, has uh, put a completely different dimension onto it. But the, the basics of being a teacher haven't really changed. It's just about forming, making sure that you can communicate and get people involved, get them invested in what, what you're trying to do for them. What do you enjoy most about being a teacher? Getting back to that previous question, I would say when people do well, when people actually attain their potential, whatever that potential may be at wh whatever level they're working at, you feel that you've done your job if you've got them. It, it's always gratifying to speak to people and, and, and find that they've got to you know, a particular job or doing something or, or you know, you know, someone is asking about you or whatever, saying how's, Mr. how's old Mr Simpson getting on or whatever, things like that. I think probably people doing well. Have you learned anything of your time of teaching? I would say that um, it's imp you should never take yourself too seriously as a teacher because the, the idea that 30 teenagers are going to listen, hang on your every word and take everything that you say seriously is probably a ludicrous idea to begin with. So it's probably better to, you know, mix in a bit of humour and it doesn't matter if sometimes things go wrong as long as you can laugh at yourself at that time because if people see that you're you know not trying to be somebody that you're not, you've got to be yourself as a teacher I think because if you're not uh, it will be spotted very quickly so you 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 are yourself you you 
you know, as much as possible you present the same person in school as you are out of school and that way you always hopefully have pupils wanting to work and wanting to do well, not just for themselves but for you as well. What has been your most embarrassing moment? Perhaps this one? Well, I don't know where that one came from, but yes, it probably is. That was 1980, 1985, the Hoyk Pram race, and I would say that it's a different world now because if I told you what the, the, the name of the, the Pram was and the theme of our, uh, you know, the idea behind that Pram race, I don't think that would go down particularly well in today's political climate, so we'll just draw a veil over that one, I think. Now to Ethan who is more on the Active Schools Travel Award. This month, Hoyk High School was once again the only high school in the Scottish border to win the Active School Travel Award. This award is in recognition of how active young teenagers in Hoyk are, with more pupils walking to school in Hoyk than in any other town in the borders. To win this award, pupils and staff work closely throughout the year with the local integrated police officers and SBCs saver route, routes to school team, promoting different forms of active travel and highlighting road safety concerns. The awards were presented to the pupils by Education Executive Member Councillor Sandy Aitchison. Now it's time to go to our sports reporter Jack, who has been interviewing Fraser Rannick. What made you play rugby for the in the first place, and did you play for the school? Uh, I think it was the contact aspect of the of the rugby game that I really enjoyed when I was a wee boy, and I was quite a you could say large boy. I wasn't wasn't the skinniest uh, little boy in the, in the park, so I quite liked the the contact side of it. And then I played for the high school. Yep, all my all my years I was here. And when did you leave for high school? Uh, just last year, so I was stayed on until. End of sixth year, so I left in 20, 20, end of 2015, May 2015, when, uh, after my exams. How did you get on at school and did you have a favourite teacher? Uh, I, you could say I'd done alright at school, wasn't it? I wasn't the brightest uh, pupil, but I uh, done okay. I left with four higher or something like that, and favourite teacher. He's not here now, but uh, Mr. Marshall, P. I don't know if you'll know him, but he was a really good teacher when, uh, when he was here, so he's probably my favourite. What was your favourite club that you played for? Oh, favourite club. Uh, I suppose I'll need to say the, I suppose I'll need to say Hoyk the now. I met Hoyk, I met Hoyk the now, so it's going really well. Unfortunate end of the season we've fell off. We know I've got to finish in top four or we've been put out of the cup, but we've had a we've had a really good season with them, learnt a lot and enjoying my rugby with them, so it's been going well. How did you find out about your selection for the under twenties and who was the first person you told? Uh, well I was lying in my bed. On, mon on the Monday night watching The Walking Dead uh, and then the phone, my mobile rang and it was the under-20s manager and so I answered it and he says he would like you to come training tomorrow because one of the hookers is injured. Uh, so then I was away up training on the Tuesday and then got told Tuesday afternoon that I was going to Italy with him. So the first person I told it was probably probably my mum and dad. What, what did your family and friends say about this action? Oh, they were just massively proud of it, what any parent would be if they're son was selected to, to play for uh, in the Scotland squad so yeah they were massively proud and they managed to get up on the telly and watch at home so hello didn't they go on to watch the game and I was they liked to see us on the, on the telly a few times when they came at the bench so thanks Fraser for coming in and talking about your experience no worries thank you that's it for this month's episode make sure to check us out on all our social media pages the brand new school app and our website at hoikhighschool.co.uk from me Hannah and me, Daniel. And all of the news team, goodbye and thank you very much for watching.